as indicative of being a violent extremist militia. Well, I will self-report right now that every day in the Senate I wear my boots that have the Gonzalez battle flag on the back of them. Thoroughly politicized. I think this is a problem that began during the Obama administration. I think it metastasized with career officials during the Trump administration, and I think it continues and is even worse today under the Biden administration. I don't believe you personally reflect that politicization, but I think you've been unwilling to root it out and unwilling to hold people accountable for the politicization. I hear regularly from FBI agents and from professionals at the Department of Justice who are dismayed that our law enforcement has been weaponized and politicized rather than remaining apolitical as it has been for the history of our country. Yesterday, it was reported that Project Veritas had obtained a copy of an FBI training material. And just so you guys know, this video comes from Gunlin, Gunlin um, Mex, Met Bexy. The link for this video will be below in the descriptions, just in case you want to go check it out yourself. Which listed various symbols and themes, which in the FBI's estimation were indicative of, quote, militia violent extremism. Now, these symbols weren't things like the Ku Klux Klan or the Nazi Party, which naturally would be symbols of that. But instead, they included rather astonishingly patriotic symbols of our nation and our history. Included on this list is the Betsy Ross flag. Now, that's fairly remarkable that the Betsy Ross flag in the FBI's indication is indicative of violent uh, militia, violent extremism, because among other people who have been publicly alongside the Betsy Ross flag, we have President Barack Obama, who was sworn in directly underneath two Betsy Ross flags. But it's not just President Obama. Mm. We also have President Biden, who was sworn in under Betsy Ross flags. It's not just the Betsy Ross flag. Also on this list is the Gadsden flag as a symbol of violent extremism. Now, the state of Virginia has a license plate for the Gadsden pl flag, as do many other states. Wow, I did not know that. Learn something new every day. <laughs> I just know. Wow, okay. I think people would be astonished to find that having that license plate, the FBI indicates that you're a violent extremist. Also included on this is a text that I was particularly struck is the Gonzalez battle flag. Come and take it as indicative of being a violent extremist militia. Well, I will self-report right now that every day in the Senate, I wear my boots that have the Gonzalez battle flag on the back of them. Director Ray, what are y'all doing? This makes no sense. Do you, do you agree with this FBI guidance that the Betsy Ross flag and the Gadsden flag and the Gonzalez battle flag are signs of militia violent extremism? Well, Senator, I, I'm not familiar with the particular document you have behind you, uh, and I'm not in the practice of trying to comment on documents that I haven't uh, recognized, but I will tell you that when we put out intelligence products, including ones that reference symbols, which we do across a wide variety of contexts, we usually uh, make great pains, take great pains to put uh, caveats and warnings in the document that make clear that a symbol alone is not considered evidence of violent extremism. Uh, and it's Well, but Director Ray, you don't include on. things like Antifa, you don't include things like Black Lives Matter. Instead, you identify patriotic Americans as suspects. And I would note there's a pattern of this. As you're aware, the National Association of School Boards asked the Attorney General to investigate parents as domestic terrorists under the Patriot Act. Now, it did so because it was upset about moms and dads coming to school boards and disagreeing with the policies of those schools. Five days after that letter, the Attorney General sent a memo to you directing the FBI to target parents for investigation. Since that time, the National Association of School Boards has apologized for the letter because it was so indefensible, but that hasn't stopped the FBI. In fact, you've created a specific threat tag ed uh, directed at parents. So let me ask you, how many moms and dads who have spoken up at school boards has the FBI interviewed or investigated since the memo from the Attorney General? Well, first off, I'll say I'm not aware of any. But second, let me address the issue. You're not aware of any? Like Just, the House of Representatives me, has if you, written you and asked if you, you would let me, If you would let me. So please answer. Please. Uh, let me say to you and to this committee 
the same thing I said to every FBI field office after I read the memo, which was that the FBI is not going to be in the business of investigating speech or policing speech at school board meetings or anywhere else, uh, and that we're not about to start now, that threat violence, threats of violence, that's a different matter altogether, and there we will work with our state local partners as we always have. So, Director, you Ray, asked about, Director, you asked Ray, about, Director Ray, our time is, are, do you know how many parents you have interviewed or investigated since that, that memo? I am aware that we have had a small number of assessments, which is less than an investigation, and a few full investigations, not, hold on, hold so on, how many hold, hold on. Well, let me finish. I, I'm just I'm asking okay. you a question. That our time is limited. I don't know the number, but that not okay, but, well, but, well, but wait, let me finish. That are not necessarily of parents. We have individuals who have made threats against a variety of people. Sometimes school board officials, sometimes other okay, people as Director well. Director Ray, I, I will point out the House of Representatives has sent you oversight letters detailing dozens of investigations under a threat tag directed at parents, parents, moms and dads who G-men have come in because they spoke out against mask mandates or vaccine mandates or critical race theory, and suddenly the G-men show up. And this was after the Attorney General claimed it wasn't happening. And so... The pattern, sadly, we've seen, you say you don't know how many there are. The follow-up will be, I'll send you a letter, and you'll send back a letter that says, I refuse to answer it. Let me now, these con this is a congressional hearing, right? I used to see these come on, and I used to see them on the internet as well. And I used to be like, man, these joints look boring as hell. Like, I don't like these. Now I can watch these joints all day long, because you actually see people being held accountable for their parts and whatever they're discussing. Whatever they're discussing, um, Director Ray seems to be, although y'all might not agree with him, um, one thing he is doing is at least he's trying to answer the questions or he's speaking up in his own way where he's probably hiding the answers to the questions that that's being asked. But Ted Cruz is definitely going to hound him until he give him the answer that he desires or not the answer that he desires, but he just want him to just... Without having to go around, you know, the whole Sally's barn, just give me a direct answer, bro. Just answer me directly, and then we can move forward. I really enjoy these conversations because everyone will get something from it. Just by watching two adults have a conversation, whether they're whether you agree with them or not, this is how we move forward. Let me give one another example. Re this is a Senate hearing. Recently, there was the case against individuals charged with kidnapping and murdering Governor Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan. That case ended up an absolute debacle where the four people who went to trial, two of them were acquitted, two received mistrials. None of them were convicted on even a single charge. And the basis of the defense was entrapment that the FBI, that paid enforcements for the FBI had suggested and had incited the conduct. Let me ask you, how many FBI agents were disciplined or reprimanded after that disastrous case and the misconduct that led to every defendant being acquitted or having a mistrial on every charge? None. Not a damn one. I'm sorry. Let um, Director Ray answer this one. Uh, Senator, I can't comment on a personnel matter. I can tell you that that case, as I understand it, is now pending a, uh, a retrial, as I understand it. Well, the special agent in charge of that case has now been sent to D.C., to the Washington, D.C. office, and now leads the investigation regarding January 6th. Is that correct? That doesn't sound right to me. That does not sound right. The, the, the name of the individual is Stephen D'Antuno. He was, he was run out of the FBI Detroit field office. Okay. And by the way, I will point okay. out that the lead investigator, Special Agent Track, are you aware that he was apparently fired <laughs> for allegedly beating his wife after coming home from a swingers party and he'd made multiple derogatory political posts? Whoa, what? He came home and beat his wife after coming from a swingers party. How in the hell? What type of freaks are we? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong if you and your wife want to bring more. Because the, the Bible says the bed should not be defiled. Nah, listen, that's sin. Y'all sinning like hell. But I'm just going to say this. <laughs> they going to freak y'all going to swingers parties. and then, Don't beat your damn wife if you're going to a swingers party, bro. Like, shouldn't the swingers party get all of that extra energy out of you? Huh? That's what you should be there doing. You obviously didn't do what you were supposed to be doing at the swingers party. If you're just going to come home and still have the energy to go upside your wife's head, 
You're supposed to be there, bang, bang, banging. What, your love interest and broke up with you? Was you at the swingers party and the girl that you desire, the woman that you desire, or the man that you desire, somebody else walked up to him and started um, and took their attention away and they wouldn't let you watch? What was the case? Did they, did they spank you too hard? What was the problem? So since they didn't listen to your safe word while y'all was in the middle of doing freaky McNasties, huh? Huh? You came home and decided to whoop on your wife. Wow, this is some this is free guy. And then he ended up getting the getting the main job to was this the guy that he says is now over the whole Jan Six thing? About President Trump showing political bias. Are you aware of that? I am aware of I think the incident you're describing uh, and action that was taken about it. Uh, to clarify on the first part of your question, uh, Mr. D'Antuano was the special agent in charge of the office. Uh, the Detroit field office and is now the assistant director in charge of the Washington field office. I thought you were asking about the agent who was responsible for the. So the guy in charge got promoted and is now in charge of the January 6th investigation. The guy in charge of the whole Detroit field office is now in charge of the whole Washington field office. That is astonishing. Wow. And that was freaking McNasty. The one that whooped on his wife after coming home from a swingers party. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not laughing because the woman was beat. That's not funny at all. He shouldn't have gotten promoted for it, especially if it's in his record. That's in his record, bro.